Hi everyone, welcome to the Dojo Academy and welcome to introduction to programming using Java. So before we get started, I'm going to ask you to make sure that you do have these prerequisites, that you have watched all the videos available in the description of this video and the previous video. And then you should also be familiar with the concept of algorithms. So basically, if you watch it, everything, just make sure that you can answer these questions. Now, let's get started by understanding uh, what is Java. Why do we have Java? Why are we using Java? So I have here draw.io that we will be able to draw uh, nice pictures. Uh, this is uh, app.diagrams.net and I'm going to use this throughout this course. Now, Java it's a programming language. It's what we call a high-level programming language. It means that we humans can understand easily what's written there. Even if you get like a piece of code of Java and give to someone that's not familiar with programming, they will at least be able to understand some of it. This is what we call high-level programming language. And why are we going to use Java? First, Java, it's a language that is used like everywhere. And uh, if you search for the most used languages worldwide, the Java language is always in the top three. So sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down, but it's always at the top. And then secondly, is because we have something for you. So after you watch this video, we still don't have the course here, but after you watch it, you have this Java one for all. You can go to devdojo.academy and then you have 50 plus hours of contents of Java. In this course, it covers like everything throughout 285 videos that you will be able to understand the concepts of the language in that. Now, let's go back and let's understand what and how Java works. So basically, you know that we have operating systems. If you watch the videos, you know that what operating systems should be doing, basically managing what you have in your computer. So let's start with the most famous ones here. And we can tell here as well that we have Linux, any distribution. Okay, so how does it usually used to work. You used to develop an application directly to an operating system. So let's say that we have here a nice application. I'm going to use this little ball right here. Okay, so imagine that we have here our app. So if we write our app directly to our operating system, what's going to happen? You have your app that's developed for Windows and then you have to develop your same app, for example, in another programming language to work with Mac OS. And what's the problem? The problem is even though the programming languages, they are similar high level programming languages like Java, like C Sharp, like Swift, they have the pros and cons, of course, some similarities, but they are different. You have to understand how the language works and having to develop like an app with different languages for each one of the operating systems, well, as you can probably imagine, is not very efficient. Now, this is where Java, more than 25 years ago, came to save our day. So basically, instead of developing directly to the operating systems, you are going to develop to what we call a program called Java Virtual Machine. So it was something very smart that guys did. So basically, they put another layer here. And when you start developing software, you see that this kind of this pattern is pretty common. So basically, they said, okay, let's do something here. Let's add a layer, and this layer will be a software, and this software will be called Java Virtual Machine. But this Java Virtual Machine is not like one virtual machine that will be used for all of them. Each one of these operating systems, they will have their own specific virtual machine. So in this case here, the virtual machine for Windows will be one, the virtual machine for Mac will be another one, and the virtual machine for Linux will be another one. So basically each one of these operating systems, they will have their own version of virtual machines. Why is it that? Because as you can probably remember from what I just said, it's just a program. And a program, it needs to communicate with the operating system. So basically the exit of this program, of these virtual machines, is operating system dependent. This means that each one of these virtual machines, the output, basically the language it talks, will be specific for operating systems. But the language it can understand is just one. So it means that once you have an app 
let's go back to our app here that we had. Once you develop something in Java, let's call app.java, it doesn't matter what virtual machine you're using. So once you have the, the app developed in Java, the virtual machine for Windows will understand this app. The virtual machine for Mac will also understand and the same for the virtual machine for Linux. So basically Java has a famous slogan that you write once and run everywhere. So this is a pretty interesting concept because you don't have to develop your, your code in different languages. You write in one language and because the Java virtual machine, also called JVM, is able to understand and translate the specific operating system. So basically this is just a software, a software that you are going to install in your computer. We are going to see how we can do that in the next video. But there is a problem here, because remember, Java itself is a high level programming language. It's a programming language that it was created for us humans to be able to write instructions in a way that is easy for us to understand. So basically, all the programming languages, they are going to achieve the same results that's giving instructions to uh, achieve a specific goal. But the difference between each one of the programming languages is that some of them, they say, okay, you can achieve the same result, but with few lines. You can achieve the same result uh, in a more concise way. So each one of the programming languages, they will have pros and cons, and you will see people fighting, but in the end, the one that pays our salary is the best programming language. So here, we have to do something, because the Java virtual machine, it does not understand Java. It understands something different, something called bytecode. So basically what happens is we first develop in Java the, let's say the file that we are going to have will be something ending with the extension .java. And then we need to change this into something that the virtual machine will understand, something close to a machine code. In this case, this process is called compilation. And the compilation will generate something. That will be the name of your file, but the end will be dot class. So this process that you have between your app here, dot Java, and it looks like this is not working. There you go. So this process we call compilation. And when you compile your software, you are going to have something. The result of this compilation is your bytecode. So this here, we can add here a quick note. This is called your bytecode. And bytecode is what the JVM can understand. So you are never going to send your app.java directly to your JVM. So the JVMs that we have available here, they are they can understand bytecode. So basically, whatever we have here, let me just highlight these arrows. Whatever we are going to have as input is a bytecode, and the output will be, and for us actually it doesn't matter, because the output will be something that the operating system will understand. So we are going to see in the next video that the app.java is pretty easy to understand, but the bytecode, once we try to open, is something that technically for us is unreadable. We can understand the bits and pieces, but it's difficult to, to understand because it's focused on a machine level. Now, there are some programs that will do the, the process of decompiling. So basically, compilation is when you go from Java to bytecode. A uh, bytecode is something that ends with dot .class, the extension. And when you are decompiling, you are going back, is kind of you get your bytecode and you go back to .java. So this process is not perfect. There are some errors, but it's possible to understand that sometimes it works like flawlessly. You can understand everything that uh, came from the uh, bytecode. So basically, this is how Java works. So this is why we have the slogan, you write once, you run everywhere, because you write one application, and this application will be compiled, and once it's compiled, as long as the operating system has the Java virtual machine installed, you will be able to run this code. And how do we have this uh, compilation 
available for us. We have to install something in Java called Java Development Kit. So basically, this Java Development Kit is a set of programs that you download that will give you a lot of functionalities from Java. For example, JVM, the Java Virtual Machine, is something that's part of the kit. Uh, debugging is also something that we are going to see how it works that is also part of the kit. Uh, compiling is also part of the kit. So there are several programs that we are going to see that are part of this kit that you need. And you probably heard about something different. There are these two famous ones, uh, the JDK, Java Development Kit, and we have JRE, Java Runtime Environment. So basically, when you are a developer and you are developing like code uh, using Java, you need the Java Development Kit. But let's say that, for example, we just want someone to execute your code. So if you ever used like any Java application on your browser, uh, if you are probably older than 25 years, you uh, understand that every time you were installing uh, something, it was asked, hey, you need your Java Runtime Environment installed. So Java Runtime Environment is a program that will execute your Java application. So the JDK, it comes with GRE. But if you are not developing software with Java, you don't need to install the JDK. So in our case, since we are developers, we are going to install the JDK. It will have its own JRE, and we are going to use the one that's coming with JDK. But if you are not a developer, technically, you don't have to install um, the JDK. You just install the Java runtime environment. So basically, that's the whole Java architecture. What do you have to remember? You have to remember that you are going to write an algorithm, a program using Java. The name of the application will end with .java, the extension of your file will be .java. Then after this, we have a compilation process that's going to change your Java code into what we call bytecode. The bytecode is exactly the same name of your file .java, but the extension will be .class. And this is the one responsible for the JVM translating to a operating system. So basically, if you have to summarize, this is how Java works. So in the next video, we are going to install Java in our machine and we are going to configure it correctly. So I hope you enjoyed. See you in the next video. Bye bye.